tuning in to Chaos Culture Radio. Dropping knowledge in the studio, you already know. Thank you for tuning in to Chaos Culture Radio. Yes, sir. We back again once again. Yes, we are. We back again. We we, we back at it, Hakeem. Yeah. W- what they do, man? Yeah, man. We back at it, man. It feels good, man. It feels good to be home. It feels good to be wild away. It feels good that we can put in work. What about you, Hakeem? How you feeling? Man, let me tell you something. It's always a blessing to sit and talk to my brother, Ron Yes, Taker. it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> I know people been waiting. They be like, man, when are we going to drop the new episode? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell you, man. Nah. I'm trying to, and listen... People, if you want new episode, donate. Um, yeah. There. The more you yeah. share, the more you donate, me and Ron can take from working regular jobs. You feel me? And we- Support the black businesses. See, we support a lot of people's businesses, yeah. but don't want to support our business. I don't understand that. Well, the problem is they don't take us serious in the, the, the stain <laughs> that the black people <laughs> got for us. The one that's to support the business. Yeah, I know, man. But... But anyhow, man, I don't know, man. Like lately, I've been watching the news. I've been reading articles, out of articles. I think even you can see what's going on in the world. What's next for the black community, bro? <sighs> Brother, that's a good question. You know, I'm a you know I'm a sympathizer and a follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, sir. Um, which they form of economical plan comes from the beloved, um, who I want to say his name in perspective, Honorable. Marcus Mosiah Garvey from Jamaica. Yeah. He is the father of Pan-Africanism, uh-huh. the father of black nationalism. Yes, he and, is. And he and he and he's the first to ever have a first cruise line and try to promote group economics and, and amongst black people. So yeah. what I see, what I would want to do, and, and, and a lot of people are gonna get mad when I tell you this, Rontega. Uh-huh. And this is no shot to no woman or no man. You ready for what I got to say, Ron? Yeah, go ahead. We don't need no more car washes. We don't need no more hairstylists. We don't need no more lashes shops. We definitely don't need no more boutiques. We definitely need no more fried chicken spots. They're not doing nothing for the hood. Mm-hmm. We don't even support those places anyway. Facts. What's going to bring up a neighborhood is a supermarket, laundry mats, factories, you know what I'm saying? Investing in certain businesses that can um help build the community. I've lived in different places and I've seen how the how the situation works. There's a laundry mat, there's a community, there's a local bank. Matter of fact, here's the funny thing is mm-hmm. our local banks is not in the ghetto hundred percent like that. No, no. You, do you know where there's a one united near us? There's one on uh, 79th. Oh, okay. Um, and That's where's the, the only next? one. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. That's the only one on 79 and on 20 something. Yeah. Why there's not one on 62nd and 7th Avenue? The heart, the heart that interchange from Liberty City to Little Haiti. The more banks, wow, we, the yeah, th- think about it. the more banks we have in our neighborhood. Um, you, you know what I mean? We, we, we're helping and we need economical development. We need people who's going to come into the ghetto and build factories and hire everybody within the neighborhood. I've lived in a town before where the whole town works for the factory. You know what I mean? Capitalism is the only way that's going to save black America. But my thing is right now, I, I think you, you heard about the reparation, how they're working about re- um, with reparation. Do you think that's going to benefit the black community? Um, it, it it will benefit um black people who are American descendants of slaves, not everybody. But I don't even think, to be honest with you, and I'm um, I don't even think they're going to get it. Mm. I don't think they're going to get it because the thing about it is, Obama has said the reason why he left the talks of reparation now because of white resistance. White people was a hundred percent appalled by the thought of paying black people who slaved worship and, 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 and built a country and they felt like they didn't need it, which is appalling to hear that there was a resistance about that. But the thing about that is black people need to have a do for self attitude. And this That's is what I'm saying. Dog, say, is it really a bad thing? Because black people don't need it. We don't need it. No, we, 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 we don't need it, but I do understand to the point where, 
um, th- th- there is a debt that hasn't been unpaid. Like, mm-hmm. in, in, in mind you, there is ways to unpay that debt, but the thing about that is reparation is going to be exploited. I'm going to tell you why. Why? 101 people can wake up one morning and say, I'm three quarters black. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. It's, it's going to be a loophole. It's going to be uh, loopholes. It's going to be Hispanics. It's going to be Indians. It's going to be yeah. everybody say, oh, I'm, I'm, I was born a slave. My parents were slaves in America. You but know, the thing is, Indians have reparation. The Jewish community have res- uh, reparation. Oh, yeah. Uh, the white have reparation. And even Hispanics. You already know the Cubans in Miami yeah. have reparation. So the thing, the only people that don't have rep- rep- reparation is the so-called black Negroes. And I feel for them. They've been so lost in the wilderness they don't have a name and they don't know this stuff and they can't trace themselves. So that's why they've been wandering around America, like running around. And this is why you have the movements like the ADOS and the FBA, which we support. Right. Shout outs to JP. Go check yes. out the Facebook page. But Shout in out to opinion, well. We need to come together as a team and the ADOS need to embrace other cultures so we can support their movement. You feel me? Because right. there's only 40 million black people, 40 million black African Americans in the United States. And that's yeah, number and the numbers is dropping, and the number is dropping in a rapid rate. Yeah. Due to and the fact of abortion and um killing um, men being incarcerated and uh, we're dying of health issues. Yeah. So now and we have 13% population. Basically. Yeah. And then on top of that, those are the ones who identify as being black. Correct. There's a couple outliers who don't identify as being black. So with that being said, we need to build our own schools in, 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 in our own district. We need to teach our own kids. But the thing about that, for that to happen, black people in the neighborhood need to support and fund. So it's a domino effect that has to happen. We need jobs. We need schools. But I can you know, I might have to be negative on this one, but I really, I really feel black people don't want to get out of the slum. I think we want to be beggars. I don't think we want to be conquerors anymore. Mm. Mm. This generation of blacks. Not all, but some. There's just some by bl- what you see, just by what you hear, and just by what's going on. Because you know how long people like Marcus Garvey and all these people have been preaching this, and still black people still don't want to do for self? 100%. They probably rolling in their grave right now. Yeah. And remember, we even talk about it. And remember, me and you, we even did a podcast on it with uh, Herman. Shout out to Herman about um, is black people are cursed. Are we destined to be cursed? It because it like, seems like we don't want to get out of this slum. No. Not all, seems, but most. Yeah. It seems like we are. But for the most part, a lot of these surface level problems could be handled with simple fixes that we can do ourselves. We don't need the government for no help. I don't ever see the China man asking for no help. You see? That's why they well respected. Or the Jewish. But it's only the, the so-called black people. That's why I say, I don't understand. And back then, I think you even know because you, you know, I call you like a historian yeah. because you do like research over I like do. back then. And you see like back then, you see black people was really doing for self. Oh, my they God. They never depend on the government. Reading levels was off the chart. We had more businesses. Um, More people was married. Yes. Um, I remember a black lady who, we. do you know that back in the days, my, Miami had their own black hospital? I met a lady. Yeah, who was, yeah my friend told me that. Yeah. yeah, I met a lady who was born in a in a hospital that was owned operated by black people. Yeah, my friend told me that. Yep. Listen, Florida Memorial is a black college. FAMU is a black college. Bethune Cookman is a black college. I'm talking about these colleges have produced more doctors, lawyers, agriculturists, me- mechanics, machinists. We can be self sufficient of our own, but the hatred amongst our people is so real. That I can't walk through Liberty City without a nigga tapping my jaw. You see, so is it really the white man, or is something with with it within us internally? Because it seems like people say it's the white man, it's the white man, it's the white man, and I don't really think it's always the white man's fault on certain aspects. No, yeah, you, you're 100 percent right. In 2021, we need to start to take accountability for our own actions. Preach. We can't blame. We can't blame white folks for everything. The opportunity is there. It's there. I was talking to my friend about that. I told him 
the opportunity is there. It's there for us to win. Yeah. No, the system is against us. I don't think it's like that anymore because look what they're doing now with the LGBTQ Ooh, community. They're trying to replace us. Little G. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's there. And not only that, but Joe Biden had the nerve to say the LGBTQ community was like the civil rights movement. Oh, my God. That's like a disrespect. You know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah. It, it was a very disrespect. You know what I mean? For the ADOS. Because the that ADOS was very was with you know, You know, we from Haiti. You feel yeah. me? That was very disrespectful. We from Haiti. Our issues are with the French. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we here in America, so our issues with the white folks as well. But we take a different stance. We we going to build for ourselves. Me and my man here about to buy our own land. We're going to pool our money together to buy our own land and to build a farm and to start buying laundry mats. And, um, Sometimes, I was going to tell you, you, we can do it. Yeah. All you need is just 12. Some people are like, that's 12 disciples. Yeah. But sometimes that's all you need. You don't need a large group of people. No, you and don't. you can change the world. Man. Jesus has 12. David had a group. Basically. Moses had a group. A lot of them had a group. Basically. Abraham had a group. He had his family. Noah had his family. Yep. This is what I'm this is what I'm saying. So this is why I was saying, like, hey, um, you know, I mean there, there, there's a lot of ideas we can run by and, and stuff like that, but group economics is the main key point on it getting is. black people together. And on um, buying businesses and, and and showing that that's why I said we're gonna have to be the catalyst to opening up a business and buying some land. And we would like to work with some people who wants to donate and helping us buy some land so we can build up build up something for people where we can start to show people how to do this. You know what I mean? And your contributions right. and your and, and your help to help us get to what we point. We're not trying to get no big land. We just want to show y'all what we can do with a little bit of help. Yep. You know what I'm saying? With a little bit of help. And, and, and people ain't talking like this. I can't nobody's talking oh, no, about no, buying no, no, no. Nobody's talking about buying houses. Nobody's no. talking about that. They talking about renting and this. Don't get me wrong, I rent as well. However, you still need stuff like that. Land is something that's gonna last internally. There's Man. people like right now in the white community that have land since 10th and 5th generations. Definitely. These people still want to integrate with white folks. <sighs> You can't even feel comfortable going to Aventura without a police pulling you over and you want to integrate with white folks. <laughs> Go to Weston and see you don't get your head knocked, knocked sideways by a Billy Club. Man, you going in, man. You be going in, man. You I do, be, man. You be having you feel some type of way. Yeah, because it's true. And shit, it's the same way by going to Liberty City. You can't trust no nigga out there. Nigga see you and want to run down <laughs> on you. So not where no can nigga, we live? Not nigga word. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying where, if we can't live, if we can't live by the niggas and we can't live by the white folks, where do we live? With Papito in them? It just is black. They just oh, like black. Yeah. So. yeah. So, oh man, we just need to practice group economics. Yes. Um, do for self attitude. Build our own banks. Build our own schools. Laun- have our own laundry mats. You feel me? Trying to say like 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 in and, and me and my homie, we're trying to do that. We don't want to be the only ones owning up the hood. That's not our dream. See, this is stuff they were supposed to teach us in school. That was like, man, that was like, what I found out we've been lied to by so many things, bro. This is the stuff they should have taught us in school was group economics. Group economics. And let me tell you something. The biggest lie they told us was to go to college. Because we went to college to go work for a white boy. That college money, you know how much people could deal with that college money? Man, I would have been a multimillionaire by now. Facts. Multimedia, laundry mats, um, storage lockers. I, we would have just been like, we would have just been eating. We would have just been eating. I would have had like three fine little young pretty things. Matter of fact, I would have had as many wives as brother polite. <laughs> you, I dropped out of college. I did a trade school. I was like, man, I ain't college hey, same, same here, man. We, we, I'm a trade man too. I'm a CDL driver. Yes, yeah, you know, yeah. College you know, for me. They were like. I was like, nah, college. I went there. I was like, ah, I went there one day. I was like, nah, it ain't for me. And then I found out the truth about college. No offense, people that want to go to college, you know, go go to college. You want to go yeah. to college, make it your choice, but don't be pressured that you got to go to college to be successful. That is a lie. Basically. Because Donald Trump didn't even go to college. A lot of people, I can give you names. Warren Buffett didn't even graduate. A lot of people didn't graduate college and they're more time millionaires and billionaires. So that is a lie. You just got to understand how money works and how to do this. But, but, but for us as black people, we need to come together. We just need to come together and we're, right. just, 
we just we need to come together and we need to have a template of what we follow. First, we need to stop bickering and fighting and be able to get up and help move a couch one once or twice a day. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Once you can help when you, once you can be once you can help your homeboy move a couch, then we can start talking about opening up a business. Other than that, I want to see I want to see niggas move couches first before I call y'all for businesses. I agree. And the first thing they do, I'm gonna ask them to, how many jobs you got. They're like, I ain't working. Then you, you gotta we gotta work on that. We gotta work on that. You know what I mean? And, and, and this, the, but listen, this is the same thing we and you deal with. Look, it took us a long time to connect, and that's understandable. God works in mysterious right. ways. But how many other dudes we have around us who have so many talent that don't want to put a team together so we can take over? Facts. A lot. You, you like like does that make sense? No. White boys will get together by the numbers and they'll start companies on our ass. Us niggas want to be the head nigga in charge. I don't want to be the head nigga in charge. I want to be the nigga who's getting money. But remember, a lot of us have been raised by our moms. Meaning even though our father was there, we would still have been, been raised by our moms. Our mom kind of baby us. Didn't even give us the true meanings of manhood. That you okay. need to go out there and get for self. So basically... It's that feminine way about us. That, Pretty much. That, that we want to like be. Mama going to always be there. Mama. So when. That was, I'm so grateful for my pops. Because my pops always had me working at the early age. Since nine years old. I was always in the field with him. So that hustle. Always had that hustle. So with me. I can never go without. Yeah. I can never go without. So. That hustle. A lot of men need to have too. Like. We can we have to have that same mentality of never going without. When we understand we can never go without, I think that's gonna give us the drive and push to start working together. One hundred percent. Man, honestly, you just killed that part. I don't I really did, got, man. I don't really got nothing to say after that. But then that being said, KR Culture Radio, we out. Peace. Yeah, yeah. Man, man, I just appreciate y'all just listening. Stay tuned for the next episode.